Hello and welcome to Introduction to Networks, Module 2, Basic Switch and End Device Configuration. So in this chapter, what I did for this chapter, I split it into two. First, I'm going to go over the slides with you, the first 15 minute video. And then on the next video, we're going to go over with a packet tracer. We're going to do all the configuration that you need to do on a switch. We're going to create a small little network and do all the configuration that it needed and all the commands that are needed, or we win, we, we will go through over um, in this chapter. So you'll do the hands-on on the second part with a packet tracer uh, file. So let's begin and start this. We have to keep this short, um, you know, like I said, up to 15 minutes. Make sure you take all the notes that I asked you to take and upload them as homework. All right, so um, Cisco, uh, uh, <clears throat> the switches and the and the routers have operating systems that operate the devices. What is an operating system? An operating system is an interface between the user, the hardware, and the software of the device. So the operating system is the when you have the shell. The shell is where the user gives commands to the uh, to the operating system. The kernel of the operating system is the one that takes your commands. And, and connects you to the hardware or the software of your device. Okay, so that's the kernel. The kernel is the one that communicates between them. So please write down those three characteristics of an operating system. You have the shell, the kernel, and the hardware. All right, the operating system, you don't, hear, you don't have to type commands all the time. For example, your Windows 10 operating system is a graphical user interface where you can just point and click and then the commands are done automatically for you. This is a user-friendly operating system. Most desktop computers have that. Our uh, switches and, and routers also have operating system, but we'll mostly use commands. Using commands, you, uh, you're just using a very small amount of text to send. So uh, they are less inten inten intensive in, in terms of CPU power and memory. Um, if you have a GUI operating system, that will take up a lot of memory space because to run the, v the, the windows and the, and the buttons and all of those different, um, made to make it user friendly, it's going to occupy more memory. So running a, a graphical user interface operating system would require you to have more memory than a text operating system. Okay, so... Uh, <clears throat> to be able to access the operating system in the switch or router, you have to go through the console port. So this part, this end of the, you need a cable called the console cable. This cable connects to the serial port of your desktop, and this goes on the device console port. It will say console port. Now, if you do not have, if you have a, if you have a newer uh, device such as your laptop or maybe even now the latest desktops do not have the nine pin serial port. They have a USB uh, connection. So you probably would need a USB connecting on, on this end and to connect to your, um, to your PC. And this end will still be the console port. Once you are connected, then you launch a software called Putty to enable you to connect. So you'll be connecting from your PC. And uh, for example, you'll click on Telnet or any of these devices to be able to connect, typically the serial port, and we'll be able to use that. So to be able to access to your device, you have to either go through the console port. For the very first time, by the way, you have, you have no choice because your device is not configured. You will have to go through the console. Either you can go through SSH or Telnet. So those are the three different methods to access your device to configure it. All right, so here's a typical uh, putty, the software that allows you to connect or the terminal emulation, pro emulation program that allows you to connect to your device to configure it. Usually you click on serial and then you'll be, you just hit open and you'll be able to connect and get in there and you'll be able to configure your device. All right, so once you are in there, there are two modes. There are the user mode. How do you know your user mode? Please write this down. 
So you are in the user mode if you see the prompt with the greater than sign. And if you type the word enable, the command enable, you'll go into the privileged mode. So how do you know that you are in the privileged mode? You have the prompt, in this case it's router, with the number sign, the pound sign. So the two modes, you want to be in the privileged mode to be able, you know, it's called privileged because you should have some privileges because this is where you make changes to the router. In the user mode, um, you're only having basic commands that you'll be able to do. All right, so the two primary modes are the user mode and the privilege mode. Write these down and what they are allow you to do. All right, there are other modes. You can go from the user mode, you go into the configuration terminal mode. All right, this is the prompt. This is where you'll be doing most of your work to be able to configure your router. This is where you do the configuration. The operating system, when it boots up, it doesn't really do anything. What it needs, the operating system on the switch or the router, it needs a configuration file. It needs to know how to set up the switch or the router. So it, that's where we come in. We create a configuration file, save it in a chip on the switch or the router called the non-volatile RAM, the NVRAM. So the operating system will always look in the NVRAM. It's to look for a configuration file and grab it. That configuration file that is saved in the NVRAM is called the startup config. So if it goes in there, sees a startup config, it takes that startup config and configures the switch the way you wanted it to act. If, he, if the operating system goes to the NVRAM and does not see a configuration file, then it's prompted you, then it will prompt you and ask you to create one. The, oper the operating system will not be able to operate the switch without a configuration file. So that's where we have to create the configuration. Um, what does that mean? Maybe we want to set up, set up the ports to only allow certain uh, devices to enter it. That, we have to write that in the configuration file. You may want to create VLANs. You may want to create you know, many other things you want the switch to do. Um, you have to create and type in commands and create a configuration file, then place that configuration file in the NVRAM. All right, so most of the time when you're creating a configuration file, you have to be in the global terminal terminal to do that. All right, um, we'll go through the videos. Like I said, we'll be able to do that. You type enable to go, to go from the <coughs> user mode to the privilege mode, type exit. When you, then you get out, you get out from one mode to the other, all right? If you want to set a password, for example, line console, you type line console, you'll be on the line interface. If you want to go to an interface to set it up, you type interface, the name of the interface and the port. Um, and here's how you would type commands. This is the prompt. This is the command. Then you put a space and then you... For example, given a, a keyword or an IP address in this case. We'll be able to do that. You'll get the, you know, that's a very easy thing to do. Um, <clears throat> again, you can, we'll do all of these commands. The ping command to check to see if there's a device that has been, you know, if, if you are connected or not. So like that. Let me just go back a little bit. All right, so for example, if you typed something and the operating system did not recognize it, it will tell you, hey, this is an ambiguous command. That means I don't, you know, I don't understand how it is. We'll see how it is when we do our packet tracer. But if you type a command, if you know the first three words of a command and you don't know how to spell it, just type a question mark. Then the operating system is going to look for all the commands that starts with the letter C-O-N. And he'll say, here, you, it's either configure or connect. That's why when you type con, it didn't understand. It said ambiguous because I don't know what to run for you. Is it configure or is it connect? Then you, you know, if you hit the tap key, if you type C-O-N and you hit the tap key, it will execute it. So when you write conf, conf, there's only two, there's only one command that starts with C-O-N-F. So it will execute configure for you. So you don't have to write the whole word configure. And the letter T is for terminal because the only parameter that comes with configure is terminal so writing conf t is the same thing as execute executing the command configure terminal so it will be a shortcut we'll see that when we're doing it 
in our packet tracer exercise. All right, so these are some hotkeys and shortcuts. So we'll learn all the shortcuts uh, when we are doing this. You'll be able to do that in the, um, in the packet tracer that we will do later on. All right, so some basic configuration. Uh, the first thing that you are when you are configuring a switch or a router is to give it a prompt name. Change the prompt from switch to the name, typically where it's located, where the device is located. We call that the host name. So by typing the command, make sure you're in the configure terminal mode. You type the command host name, space, the name of the location where the device is. Typically, it's written in capital letters. Uh, get used to that. Always write capital letters for host names. All right. Uh, setting passwords. You want to make sure only specific authorized users will have access to your um, to your device. So you want to set up, for example, the console password. When somebody has that console cable, when they get in, they're going to be prompted for a password. So when you, you type, if you can figure the switch by typing line console zero password Cisco login. So what you're saying is when somebody comes in with that blue console cable, try to enter your device to configure it, they are going to be prompted for password. That's where the word logging in is you're telling the switch prompt the user for a password. When they're prompted for a password, they're going to type it in. It's sent to the switch and the switch is going to look it up and make sure that the password is Cisco. If it is Cisco, it will allow you in. All right, just remember, if you don't type the word login, the switch will not prompt you for a password. So don't forget this command. All right. To be able to go from when you type the word enable to go into the privilege mode, you want to have also a password. That's the enable password. The word secret means make sure you encrypt this password class. So next time you type enable, you're going to be prompted for a password, and that password has better be class. All right. When you are telnetting, again, this time uh, we'll be able, not you going through the console port, you're going through the ethernet port. Um, the password better be Cisco. We'll do all of that in our packet tracer exercise as well. And these passwords, the telnet password, the console password, all of those passwords are not encrypted. To be in, to, to encrypt them, you got to type the command. Sorry about that. Service encryption. All right. So write this down. How do you encrypt all the password in the startup config? You type the commands. This is, this is what I need you to type. You type in service password encryption in the global configuration command. Again, we'll be able to do that as well. A banner. A banner is when you set up, you want, when you want something to come up, every time you look at your, every time you open up your router or switch, you want a message to come up. It could be message of the day or it could be a login password. Message of the day lasts for about 24 hours. If, if you write the word login instead of MOTD, then it's going to, every time you log in, that message will always come up. All right. Um, saving the configuration. Make sure that the configuration that you've done is saved. So here's what I want you to save in the NVRAM. The startup config, I want you to write this down. The startup config is the configuration file that's located in the NVRAM. The running configuration is the file that you're working on now. If you don't write copy run start, you will not copy the running configuration to the startup configuration. So make sure you write this down. Copy running config space startup config. That's how you save your configuration file in the NVRAM. That's very important. So at the end, when you're all done, you got to make sure you do copy running config space startup config. And then when you type reload, it's just like um, um, restarting your operating system to take the configuration, uh, whatever you did the configuration to take effect. All right, so um, we'll be able to do all of that in our in our packet tracer. So save what I, write down what I told you to write down as um, proof that you actually watched the video. And I'll see you on the next video where we actually do some hands-on. Make sure your packet tracer is downloaded and installed. Until then, I'll see you on the next video.